Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Betty. I'm glad you called. Well, you'll have to give me a rain check tonight, Angel. Some girl just dropped down with an interesting proposition, and I can't afford to pass it by. Yet I'll be hanged if I touch it. This is Ed Hurley, friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Dutch Doll. Before we join the Falcon in a new and exciting adventure, here is something else that's new and exciting. Kraft Salad Oil, the wonderful new salad oil just put on the market for your home use by the makers of all those other wonderful Kraft products. Kraft Salad Oil is more than just a new salad oil. It's a new kind of salad oil. A lighter-bodied oil designed to mix smoothly and perfectly with all the other ingredients you use in your homemade salad dressings, your delicious chiffon cakes, in fact, in every recipe you have that calls for liquid shortening. The reason Kraft Salad Oil is a lighter-bodied oil is that it's made by a special process created by Kraft called superfining. The first time you try this wonderful new lighter-bodied superfine salad oil, you know you've discovered something really new, really wonderful. So don't wait. Get Kraft Salad Oil tomorrow. Look for the bottle with the beautiful label. And now, the case of the Dutch doll. It is late Sunday evening in New York. The kind of night where only Noah would feel at home. But Harry Roberts, the stocky gentleman in a wet overcoat, is no biblical character. Harry is Dutch Stevens, chief lieutenant, and right now he's on a mission for his boss. He tries the door of a nearby telegraph office. And finding it locked, begins banging on the glass. Hey, you. Uh, open up. Come on, open up. What's the matter, you deaf? Just a second. Boy. I want to send a couple of wires. I'm right, sorry, mister. We're closed for the night. Well, open up again. Now, one telegram... Well, you don't goes... understand. It's a company rule. Well, change it. Hey, who do you think you are? Just a guy with a gun. <laughs> oh. Now, do we send those telegrams? Oh, sure. Sure. That's a good boy. Now, the same wire goes to three guys. Write down their names. George Hendricks, Hotel Fortunata, Chicago. Bill Rhinebeck, Daffodil Club, Reno, Nevada. And Christopher Londis, that's L-O-N-D-O-S. Hemsley Building, Los Angeles. Got that? Yeah. Must see you June 29th at my place. Must see you June 29th at my place. New York. New York. Anything else? No, that's all. Just sign it, Dutch Stevens. Dutch Stevens. Now, can you add a P.S. to the one going to Londis? You mean you want to continue the message to him? Yeah, bright. Make it read, this is it, and sign it Harry. Just those three words. Don't worry, Buster. Mr. Londis is a smart boy. He'll catch on. Now, uh, start pounding that out. Mr. Christopher Londis. Hemsley Building. <laughs> Well, now, if you gentlemen will give me your attention for a moment. I'd like to explain the purpose of this meeting. You're probably wondering why I called it. Now that you mention it, we are... Well, I've been doing a little thinking lately, Londis. And I've come to the conclusion it's pretty ridiculous for you, Hendricks, Rhinebeck, and myself to be constantly at each other's throats. Well, so what I propose is a combine. What's wrong with the agreement we've got now, Dutch? Nothing. Except nobody's abided by it. You, Londus, have been running joints in my territory. Now, look here, Steve. Don't bother denying it, Chris. I caught four of your hoods in New York last week. And don't tell me they came to see the Empire State Building. What's the matter? Didn't you try to open a club in Los Angeles? Sure, I did. And what did it cost you to close it? Enough. That's exactly my point. Why spend time and money fighting each other? With one organization, we could cut down on overhead. 
I'm willing to bet now you'll increase your take at least 50%. And who is going to be head of this organization? I am. That's what I figure. And what's going to prevent you from, say, someday deciding you don't need Londres and freeze him out? I don't talk like a kid, Londres. No, I think I've got a very important point there. I don't know what you're saying. No, I think the rest of these boys are willing to go along. Am I right, gentlemen? Well, make up your mind, Londres. I think maybe i try it alone for a while. You're making a serious mistake. Could be. But you've got to prove it to me first. All right, Londres. And I don't imagine that it'll be quite as difficult as you think. There he comes now, Jerry. Open the door. Hello, Harry. Hi, Alanis. Get away from here fast. All right, Jerry. Suppose you drive around the park. No, no. Tell him to get out of our court. Relax, Harry. Everything's going to be okay. Not too sure, Alanis. Dutch is plenty sore. My, my, my. He make uh, any plans for me? Yeah. Sending eight men out to the coast tomorrow. You know their names? Yeah, I got them all written down. Here. Hmm. Steve Donahue, Albert Sabre. Well, this is fine stuff, Harry. How they go? They fly. Taking the five o'clock plane. I see they get nice reception. Uh, tell him to watch out for Donahue. He's one of Dutch's best. Jerry, when we get back to the hotel, remind me to make a couple of calls. Uh... Listen, Landis, before you start the rough stuff, I still think you can make a deal with Dutch. No use, Harry. We already tried. Well, let me try once more. If I can work on him the right way... Okay, Harry, you work on him. But just the same, I think I'm going to make those calls. Is that you, Harry? Yeah. Yeah, you, you busy, Dutch? No, no, come on in. What's on your mind? Well, look, Dutch, I, uh, I don't know how to say this. You don't know how to say what? Well, I've been with you for a long time. Fifteen years, isn't it? Yeah. Never once did I open my yap and give advice when it wasn't asked for. But obviously now you'd like to break a precedent, huh? I think you're making a big mistake in the way you're handling Londis. Well, what would you suggest I do? Give him a separate deal. Well, why is he entitled more than the others? Because he's a lot smarter. You're going to have trouble with him, Dutch. I doubt it. Look, boss, I, uh... I happen to know he'd take 10% extra. Well, how do you happen to know that? Well, one of his boys approached me. I thought I told you to stay away from I them. couldn't help myself, Dutch. They dropped in at the Hawk Club last well, night. Make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah, see who that is. Okay. All right, hold your horses. I'm coming. Hello, Harry. Kinsella. Yeah, it's me, pal. Well, when did you get out? This morning. Where's Dutch? Who is it, Harry? It's only me, Dutch. Well, what are you doing here, Kinsella? I want to thank you. For what? Didn't you spring me? No. Oh, quit kidding, Dutch. Who else would go to bat for me with the parole board? I wish I knew. That's funny. I thought for sure you... Well, what difference does it make? It's good to see you, Dutch. It's been a long time. Not long enough. I don't know what ideas you had. Well, when I went to stir, you were supposed to look after things. But I did, Kinsella. Very capably, too, if I say so myself. And if you think you're coming back to get on my gravy train, you got another guest coming. So that's the way the wind blows. That's the way it blows. You got anything to say, Harry? He's the boss, Kinsella. I can see that. Mr. Big Shot in person. And I think we two are probably the only ones left to remember how he got his nickname. Never mind the reminiscing. Yeah, I guess it's a sign of old age. Okay, Dutch, take care of yourself. So long, Harry. So long. What's the matter, Harry? You look worried. I am. You don't think it's an accident that Kinsella showed up at this time? Don't you? No. I tell you, Dutch, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. What you like, Harry, isn't too important. You could avoid all the trouble if you only made a deal with Londis. I told you I didn't want to discuss it first. Ah, oh, for Pete's sake, don't be so pig-headed. You know, it's possible for you to be wrong once I... you don't... Okay. Sorry I lost my temper, Harry. That's all right, boss. Forget it. After all, a big man like you is entitled to lose his head once in a while. <laughs> Hello? 
Western Union calling. Is this the home of Mr. Dutch Stevens? Yes. I have the cable for Mr. Stevens. Is he there? This is Mr. Stevens speaking. Oh, it's from London, Mr. Stevens. The message reads, Dear Father, can't wait to see you. Taking Clipper tomorrow morning. Arriving New York Friday. Love, Beatrice. Did you say Friday? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Harry. Harry. Yes, Lummy? Yes. Beatrice is coming home. What? She'll be here day after tomorrow. You can't let her do that. What's the matter with you, Harry? You don't seem to realize I haven't seen my daughter in ten years. Well, then it won't hurt to wait another one. All we need now is a dame around here to complicate things. If you ask me... Well, go on. Wait a minute. You see what I did? Where? Window. Well, you're imagining things, Harry. No. Get down, boy! Got you. Touch. Yes? They told me I could find Michael Waring here. I don't know who the they are, but they told you right. Are you the one they call the Falcon? When they can't think of anything worse. What's your name? Beatrice Stevens. Well, come in. Thank you. Uh, sit down. If you don't mind, I'd rather stand. All right, suit yourself. Now, what can I do for you, Miss Stevens? Well, I don't know if you can do anything. Well, I certainly can't if I don't know the problem. Well, to begin with, Dutch Stevens was my father. <coughs> and what is that supposed to mean? Just. <coughs> so you believe those stories, too? What do you mean by those stories? That he was a common gangster. No, wasn't he? No, it's a lie. You mean there was nothing common about him? My father was a great man, Mr. Waring. Those stories were spread by his enemies. But Daddy never harmed a soul in his life. Well, it's too bad Capone isn't around to hear that. He would have enjoyed it. I won't have you talk that way about my father. Look, Miss Stevens, I know the Bible says honor thy parents, but believe me, they never had a guy like Dutch Stevens in mind. You're lying. Well, why do you think he was killed? I don't know. But it must be part of some gigantic conspiracy. Hey, wait a minute. You actually believe that, don't you? Of course. You never read about Dutch Stevens' exploits? No. Where have you been all these years? In England, at Bedford School. Oh, pretty fancy. You know it? Only by reputation. When was the last time you saw your father? Ten years ago. You know anybody in town? No. Then how did you get my name? I asked a police officer to recommend a good private detective. Oh. And just what do you expect this detective to do for you? Find my father's murderer. Well, that's a job for the police. You've got to help me, Mr. Waring. I don't know how I'm going to reimburse you, but I'll manage somehow. Are you kidding? I'll get a job. A daughter of Dutch Stevens working? What happened to all his money? What money? Look, your old man was loaded, Beatrice. Rumor has it that in the last two years alone, he managed to put away a couple of million. Now, where is it? I have no idea. Well, it's his only child. You're entitled to it. Aren't you interested? No. Well, it interests me. Then you'll find out who killed my father. Uh, let's put it this way, Angel. I'll try and find out what happened to his money. And if, incidentally, I can turn up his murderer, that's so much velvet. It's lighter body. It's super fine. It's Kraft Salad Oil. The first salad oil ever offered for your home use by the makers of those wonderful Kraft salad dressing products. The first time you use Kraft salad oil in one of your own homemade salad dressings or in one of those big, beautiful chiffon cakes you make or in any recipe that calls for liquid shortening, you'll know you've found a treasure. For Kraft salad oil is more than just a new salad oil. It's a new kind of salad oil. A lighter-bodied salad oil that blends perfectly with other ingredients. That's because Kraft salad oil is super-fined salad oil. Yes, super-fined by a special process created by Kraft. Because it's super-fined, it's lighter-bodied. Because it's lighter-bodied, it blends new magic into your salad dressing, baking, and cooking masterpieces. So don't wait to try this new Kraft salad oil. Remember... It's lighter-bodied. It's super fine. Get Kraft salad oil tomorrow at your grocer's. Look for the bottles with the beautiful labels. Now, 
back to the adventures of the Falcon. 24 hours have passed since Mike Wary was hired by Dutch Stevens' daughter, Beatrice, to discover her father's killer. And now we find the Falcon making the grand tour. And his first port of call is a small bar on 86th. Well, well, if it isn't Jack Kinsella. Wary. When did you get out? A couple of days ago. You know, by rights, I ought to talk to you, Wary. Why did you refuse to help me when they framed me on that smuggling wreck? Well, in the first place, I wasn't asked. Didn't Dutch Stevens try to hire you? Was he supposed to? Why, that dirty, rotten liar. That no good... Well, don't stop on my account, Kinsella. I'm over 21. So friend Dutch gave you a double cross, huh? What do you think? I think if he did, he paid for it. <laughs> Meaning you believe I gunned him, huh? The cops will decide that. You're barking up the wrong tree, man. Uh, well, look, Kinsella, you don't have to explain to me. I'm just interested in one thing. Would you know where I could locate Harry Roberts? Why? Because I'm working for Dutch Stevens' daughter. Beatrice? Yeah, you know her. I heard Dutch mention her once or twice. Well, she's a young lady of property, Kinsella, only we can't seem to locate the property. What's that got to do with Harry? Oh, I thought that being Dutch's closest friend, he might be the custodian. I wouldn't know. Any more questions? Yeah, just one. How did you get out? What do you mean? Well, as I recall, it, your sentence was 10 to 20. You didn't serve anywhere near that. I got friends. Well, lucky you. Who was it, Harry Roberts? What makes you think it was Harry? Just a hunch. Suppose Harry planned on having Dutch knocked off for his dough. He might want you on the scene to take the rap. If crazy as they come, Mike. Well, who got you parole? I told you. I got friends. Okay, Kinsella. Boy like you couldn't possibly have more than one, so it shouldn't be any great problem to run him down. <laughs> Homicide, Sergeant Corbett. Hello, Corbett. This is Mike Waring. Hi, Mike. I understand you're on the Stevens case. Yeah, that's right. And look, Corbett, I'm trying to find out if it was Harry Roberts who put up the bail for Jack Kinsella. Well, why don't you ask me? Okay, I'm asking. Kinsella apparently didn't know anything about it. From what I understand, it was put up by a fellow who's here from the coast, a guy named Christopher Londis. <laughs> Yeah? Mr. Londos? That's right. My name is Mike Waring. Waring? I'm a private detective. Oh, the Falcon. Come in. I have appointed myself a committee of one to welcome you to New York and to thank you for all you've done for us here by giving us back Jack Kinsella. You're a very funny boy, Waring. Well, I don't think Bob Hope is anything to worry about. What's on your mind? I had a little trouble with Dutch Stevens. Who didn't? Well, after I learned you secured the parole for Kinsella, I got to wondering what your motive might be. And you decided... Uh, that you knew Dutch Stevens double-crossed him, and you hoped he'd make Dutch regret it. You talk very interesting, Mr. Waring. Let me hear more. Now, you said I figure Kinsella is going to take care of Dutch Stevens for me. Did I say that? Yeah. And he's only one trouble. How do I know that Dutch double-crossed Kinsella? Well, that's the simplest thing in the world. Harry Roberts told you. What did you say? Oh, oh careful, friend. It's a new suit. Listen, Waring. What are you looking for? Harry Roberts. Why... I think he may know what happened to Dutch Stevens' money. I'm working for Dutch's daughter. That's not a good enough reason, Waring. Take my advice. Stop looking. And you've made absolutely no progress at all, Mr. Waring. What do you call progress, Beatrice? When you haven't discovered who killed my father. Well, I told you, Angel, I wasn't looking for his murderer. That's a job for the police. But what have they accomplished? Well, give them time. They do all right. All I want to do is look after your interests. That means getting you a bundle of cash. I told you I wasn't interested in money. Well, you find it's a mighty comforting thing to have around in your old age. Now, as I see it, your old man was the kind who always tied up his dough in cash. He must have socked it away someplace. That should be comparatively simple to check, shouldn't it? No, just the opposite. The only party who probably knows the complete details is Harry Roberts. Uncle Harry. Oh, you remember him? Oh, very well. As a matter of fact, I heard from him about an hour ago. What? Yes. Well, in heaven's name, why didn't you mention it before? He didn't ask me. Oh. Well, I guess that's a good enough reason. Where do you say he was? Is there such a place as the Kendrake? There's a Mandrake Hotel in Madison Avenue. Yes, that's the one. All right, what are we waiting for? Come on, I'll call a cab. We'll... Don't bother, Waring. I got a car. Mr. Waring. All right, all right. Nothing to be frightened of, Beatrice. 
This is Jack Kinsella. He's a former fraternity brother of your father's. You're a very comical fella. Didn't your new boss warn you? My new boss? Yeah, Chris Landos. What makes you think I'm working for him? For well, aren't you? No, on the whole sister. Where do you think you're going? Well, I thought I'd... Sure, but wait till Mr. Waring and I leave. Well, I'm not leaving, Kinsella. I like it here. I don't blame you, but just the same, you and I are going to catch a little hair. I guess you want me to catch it right through the middle, huh? That's the general idea. Well, in that case... Oh, why, you know... Look out, Mr. Waring! No! So you want to play rough, huh? No! <laughs> Take it easy, Mike. Who are you? Sergeant Corbett. Oh, naturally. What am I doing in a hospital? <coughs> Never mind. I remember now. You're a lucky boy. Well, if your head felt like mine does, you wouldn't think so. At that, you shouldn't complain. If it hadn't been for Miss Stevens screaming, Kinsella might have killed you. Did you pick him up? Yeah, it was no trouble at all. Look, you want to hold on to him, Sergeant. I think you've got Dutch Stevens' killer there. Why? But what other reason would he have for coming after me? He claims he thought you were trying to pin it on him. I'm not trying to pin it on anybody. All I want is to find Harry Roberts. Oh, I can tell you that. You can? Well, where is Harry? In the morgue. What? In the morgue, Mike. And with three slugs in his brain, I don't think he's in the mood to do much talking. <laughs> I'm back again, Londo. So this time I brought along my gang. This is Sergeant Corbett. Glad to know you, Corbett. How bad? Uh, you've been listening to Waring. You can't believe everything he tells you. I don't know. He's a pretty convincing talker. Yeah, he would make a good salesman. Well, wait till you hear the idea I've sold him. I'm waiting. Mike thinks you killed Harry Roberts. Why should I? To cover up the murder of Dutch Stevens. You've got it all figured out, haven't you? Uh, sure. You were working with Harry all along. And when you felt we were getting warm, you decided to get rid of them. I'm afraid you're going to have to start all over again, because I got A1 alibi. What do you call A1? At a quarter to two, I was having a little interview with the district attorney. How did you know when Harry died? It's been on the radio. Right, Sergeant? Yeah. Corbett, there's some sort of a swindle going on here. I bet if you check with the DA... That won't take a minute. Your call, please. Get me the district attorney's office. Suppose you make that call downstairs. What are you worried about, Landis? I'll give you time. Listen, Sergeant. How can I if you keep talking? DA's office, Clayton speaking. Hello, Clayton. Sergeant Corbett. Oh, what's on your mind, Sergeant? Did the DA have Chris Landis on the carpet today at 145? No, the DA hasn't been in all day. You're sure about that, Clayton? Positive. So if Landis claims he spoke to him at 145, he's lying. He was here, talking to me. Tomorrow at your grocer's, remember to pick up a pint or quart bottle of wonderful new Kraft salad oil. The first salad oil ever offered for your home use by the makers of all those other wonderful Kraft salad dressing products. Try this new salad oil in your homemade salad dressings, your baking, your cooking. It's lighter bodied because it's super fine. Look for the bottles with the beautiful labels. Get Kraft Salad Oil. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Mike discovered that Chris Londos had a perfect alibi for the time of Harry Roberts' murder. And now as we find Mike, he's about to break the unhappy news to his client. Hello, Beatrice. Oh, Mr. Waring. I thought you were in the hospital. Well, I didn't like the service. Did you hear about Harry Roberts? Yes. Who did it? I voted for Londos. Well? Well, they tossed out my ballot. He's got what the Pope writers call an ironclad alibi. Couldn't one of his men have done it? Well, I never thought of that. Still, I didn't see anyone in this suite in the hotel. They might be staying somewhere else. Yes, you're right, Angel. But uh, there's a more immediate problem. What? Oh, I think that's for me. Hello? Yes, this is Waring. What? Okay, thanks. What were you saying, Mr. Waring? Hmm? Oh, uh, I was wondering what I was going to do about you. I've let you down pretty badly. Not at all. Yes, I have. 
First of all, with Harry dead, we're never going to find out what happened to Duchess Bankroll. That's not your fault. Well, I should have known Harry was living on borrowed time. How could you possibly? Because the same party who killed Dutch had to kill Harry, too. You mean for his own protection? No, I mean for her own protection. I think that calls for an explanation, don't you? I don't see why, Beatrice. I was under the impression the statement was perfectly clear. Since there's only one woman in this case, naturally, it could only mean you. Where do you want me to drop you, Mike? Oh, anywhere along here will be all right. I don't have to tell you how surprised I was when I got your call to pick up Dutch's daughter. Well, I got another surprise for you. She wasn't his real daughter. What? Sure. That's what put me on the right track. I don't get it. Well, I had two prime suspects in this case. One, Harry Roberts. And when Harry was murdered, obviously that ruled him out. Oh, that must have made him feel good. <laughs> Number two was Chris Londos. And he had a perfect alibi. That's right, so I had to start looking again. And all of a sudden it occurred to me there was one wrong note in this opera. Beatrice? Yeah, she came to me with a story that she didn't know how she was going to pay me for my services because she thought her father was broke. Didn't make sense. Why not? Well, according to her own story, she spent the last ten years in a fancy boarding school in England. The money for her tuition had to come from somewhere. Uh, she overplayed her hand. Uh, once I hit on that, the rest was easy. So, I checked Scotland Yard. Uh-huh. And now you learned the real Peter Stevens was still in London. Yeah, this gal was just trying to pick up a fast million by posing as Dutch Stevens' daughter. Hey, how about that? How about what? All that filthy lucre being buried somewhere. <laughs> Think it'll ever turn up? Uh, I doubt it. You know, a man could do a lot with that kind of money. Why don't you try to find it, Mike? Oh, I'm the practical type, Corbett. If I'm going to spend my time looking, I'd sooner hunt for something more interesting. What's more interesting than money? Women. So let me offer the next block, and I'll start my search there. Ever find yourself at a loss when you need a hot main dish in a hurry? Well, don't let that happen to you. Always keep a package or two of Kraft Dinner on your pantry shelf. Because with Kraft Dinner, you can make delicious macaroni and cheese in just seven minutes cooking time. Tender, fluffy macaroni with perfect cheese flavor all through it. You see, every package of Kraft Dinner gives you a special quick-cooking macaroni and just the right amount of Kraft grated to sprinkle in for wonderful cheese flavor. And Kraft Dinner can be your answer to today's high prices because every package makes four servings at a cost of just a few pennies each. Tomorrow, get a package or two of handy, delicious Kraft Dinner. The Case of the Curious Cop. The Case of the Curious Cop. That's the title of next week's adventure at the Fulton when Mike Waring learns that for some special problems, a policeman has a cold special answer. So be sure to listen at the same time next week to another exciting adventure of the Falcon, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. The adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Ken Lynch as Sergeant Corbin. Be sure to hear the great Gilded Sleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. In next Wednesday's broadcast, Gildy comes face to face with a hilarious problem and solves it in a way that will keep you laughing for days. Remember the show, the time, and the place. The Great Gilded Sleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. Check your local newspaper for time of broadcast. This is Ed Hurley speaking for the Kraft Food Company. Russell and Russell and Melvin Douglas both star on Theater Gale tonight on NBC. Would you like a shout out? Leave a comment in the section below. Tell me who you want to shout out to, who you want to shout out from, and we'll get it up here for you. Hey, we want to say thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss any. You got a lot more of these up there. Go check them out under the playlist. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you want to see, what you think, and we'll see you next time.